my friend welcome back and if you're new here my name is Heather and this is my channel mama in motion I appreciate you tuning in today I'm going to be discussing my experience with the weight loss app called dun, 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 noom is it good is it bad what are the pros what are the cons is it worth the money can you lose weight with it all of these are really great questions but I want you to remember most importantly that Noom is simply a tool for weight loss. It is not a fix-all. It is not a meal plan. You have to put in the physical and mental effort if you want it to work for you. It will not magically make you lose the weight by purchasing it and downloading the app. It is your consistency in following the changes that you've implemented that will help you achieve your goals over time. Even with Noom, it will still take time to see results. Using Noom does not make weight loss instantaneous. So, with all of that said, let's get started as to my experience with Noom. I started using it in May of 2021, and between May of 2021 and September 2021, which was a four month span of time, I lost 35 pounds. I maintained my 35 pound weight loss through the end of the year. I encountered some medical issues and my weight went up really rapidly, really quickly. And I got really discouraged and I quit using new and I quit dieting, I quit trying, I quit working out, I quit doing everything. Um, I was also in a substantial amount of pain due to extenuating circumstances that I ended up having surgery for and having fixed. So now I am back on my weight loss journey and I'm using Noom again, and so far I've lost 10 pounds uh, since I began. And um, I just wanted to talk about the pros and the cons of using Noom based on my own personal experience with it. So here we go. Am I recording? Oh my gosh, I am recording. <laughs> okay, for a second I thought I wasn't recording, and I was like, no, I just did that whole intro for nothing. Okay, <sighs> here we go. So. I'm gonna go over the pros first because I like seeing the positive things first and then we'll go over the more negative side of using Noom, okay? So here are the pros. One, um, it's easy to log your meals. I'm gonna go ahead and open the app and I'll even show you here how easy it is to use. Um, you can see that you can just uh, track your meal for the day you can select your breakfast, your snacks, your lunch, your dinner, and then input it. And I'm going to go ahead and input my breakfast today. Uh, so we're going to look up almond milk here. And it goes through and it shows you the calories for the serving that you use. And I took a scoop of um, my Carnation Nutritional Breakfast Shake blend and I added it to the almond milk. And so I'm going to go ahead and find that here. And this is the serving here. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and log it. And now I've logged my breakfast and it was that simple. It's easy to log meals. Um, I can use the barcode scanner to look for my meals. Um, and a lot of the times the foods will be in the app already. So that's really helpful. Another thing that I like is that I can adjust the calories if the information in Noom is incorrect and doesn't match the label on the box. So sometimes the calorie count on servings will not match compared to the label and I need to adjust them within the app, but it's really easy to do. And the second thing is, is that it's easy to create custom meals when you cook something from home. It makes it easy to figure out the serving size for your homemade meal. You can customize the title of your dish so you can find it easier the next time that you've made it and you can customize how many servings are in the meal. And the app will automatically give you the calorie count for the whole meal, along with the individual servings that you have portioned out. The third thing that I like about the Noom app is that there are recipes available, recipes that fit into your calorie budget for the day. So they aren't just going around suggesting anything, but actual recipes that you can partake in and then you'll still be able to be in your calorie deficit. So 
the fourth thing is a pro but it's also a con and you'll probably hear a lot of people talk about it when you look up noom reviews is the green yellow and red food system the thing that i like about it is that it simplifies food you can input items before you eat your food to see what category they fall into um, and then you can decide if you even want to eat them it can be helpful to see at a glance what category your food falls into and it lets you know how many calories are allotted in each category. So the red category, you have the least amount of calories available. The yellow, you have a moderate amount of calories available in. And the green, you have the most calories available in because they want you to eat mostly green foods. Green foods are the least calorie dense and contain the highest concentration of healthy nutrients and should make up the bulk of your diet. Some common green foods are veggies and whole grains. Yellow foods have more calories and less healthy nutrients per serving than green foods and should be incorporated in your diet in moderate proportions. Some common yellow foods are lean meats and starches. And finally, orange foods, which used to be red, are the most calorie dense and have the least healthy nutrients and should be eaten less frequently and in smaller portions. They include red meats and desserts. So the fifth thing is that the weight graph is really useful. Um, it shows you when the app thinks that you'll hit your goals. So if you're setting goals to lose 10 pounds at a time, it'll be like, you should achieve this goal in a month and a half by September 30th or whatever. And so that's really cool. Um, it's not necessarily true because there are a lot of variations and outside factors that come into play with our weight. So we may not be able to achieve it in the time span that it says we'll achieve it in and we can't let that discourage us. But most of the time I have found that I do achieve my goals within the time that's been allotted to me. Um, they do encourage you to weigh yourself every day, which some people have a major problem with. Um, it can be discouraging some days when your weight goes up even though you've been trying really hard and um, you have to not really let it get to you whenever you're weighing yourself daily because the thing about weighing yourself daily is that you're able to see the way that certain foods are affecting your weight and it also as a woman will help to see how your weight is affected by like your monthly cycle or when you're ovulating so things like that are going to affect your weight as well uh, but for me personally sodium plays a huge factor on my weight so i'm able to see how eating sodium the day before is affecting my weight the next day it is really important to focus on non-scale victories through this journey they're really important so how your clothes are fitting what your measurements are uh, physical um, achievements that you're doing um, having more stamina having more energy having endurance being able to do more being able to play with your kids being able to go for a longer walk those are all great non-scale victories and they're really important to cling to especially whenever your weight is fluctuating or going up on the scale so you don't want to get too discouraged you want to be able to focus on those positive things and remember that just because the scale isn't reflecting all the hard work that you've put in that those other things that you can celebrate are reflecting the hard work that you put in to see your measurements is also really important so taking your measurements is a very very important tool for weight loss because the scale does lie to us and doesn't always show us the truth about our efforts so um, our measurements are really a good way to reassure ourselves of the progress that we've made and to see the progress that we've made and um, basically if you are going to weigh yourself daily like the new map suggests then you want to um, use daily weighing as a learning tool to learn about your habits and how they are affecting your weight I think that that is the best thing that you can do if you are weighing yourself every day is to use it as a tool to learn about yourself so the sixth pro that i want to talk about is that you can add your water intake you can add your steps and you can add exercises uh, so there are buttons that you can click to track your progress in all three of those areas one thing to keep in mind is that when you're tracking your exercise, 
Uh, it does give you more calories to eat, but you don't really want to eat more calories just because you're burning more calories. That kind of goes against each other, I think. So um, just keep that in mind. Just because it says, like, hey, you burn 300 calories, here's 150 more to eat, doesn't mean that you have to do it just because it's suggested to, it, to you. Um, so you can set your water goal and then check it off as you go. And uh, for the steps, you're supposed to be able to connect it to your Fitbit. I have a Fitbit right here, and I have not been able to connect my steps to my Fitbit, so it just counts the steps that my phone counts, which is very inaccurate because I don't have my phone on me all day long. So my phone is not tracking my steps accurately or um, in total. So I'm missing a lot of steps in the app, but that's okay because I know that my steps are in my Fitbit app, and uh, it just sucks that I can't connect the two things and have my Noom app reflect my actual steps. Um, but it is something that you're supposed to be able to do. I just haven't been able to do it for some reason. So hopefully you'll be able to do it. <laughs>
Like, some brands will have one flavor listed in the green zone, while another flavor from the same brand will be listed in the red zone. It actually happened with a protein powder that I was using. One flavor was in the red zone and one flavor was in the green zone, even though they both had the same amount of calories and the same information listed in them. So it was really frustrating when the protein powder that I was using suddenly went from being a green food to a red food. And so that was really discouraging and confusing. The third thing is that it is expensive and there isn't a set price and it's confusing on how they determine who gets charged. Like I paid $140 for an eight month subscription. I honestly think that an app like MyFitnessPal would be comparable with what it does, but it would be more affordable. And the fourth and final con that I can think of is that when you're signing up, it gives you the choice between super fast weight loss, like the cheetah, or slow sustainable weight loss, like the turtle. But it does not explain how it decides between the two options or anything in between. And when you select cheetah, which I think most people will want the maximum weight loss in the shortest amount of time, so they're going to select cheetah. It gives you the calorie budget of 1200 per day. So yeah, you'll probably lose weight quickly like I did, but is it sustainable weight loss? You have to wonder. Is that something that you can keep up with for the rest of your life? Have you considered what you'll do whenever you hit a plateau and you're unable to go down in calories anymore? Because I hadn't considered any of that. I thought 1200 per day was completely reasonable until I started researching more and found that 1200 calories was the lowest that I could go. So when I hit a plateau, I wasn't able to deduct my calories any further because I was already at my lowest, which was a huge inconvenience because that means that all that I can really do is adjust my foods even further so that I'm more restrictive with what I'm intaking or I have to exercise more to burn more calories. So yeah, overall there are more pros and cons to using the new map, at least in my opinion. I've enjoyed using it, it's been really user friendly and easy to use, but due to the expense of the subscription cost, I will not be renewing this September when it's time. Um, I'm looking into my fitness pal to count my calories when it is time to renew because I still want to count my calories and I still need some type of app to help me do that. But I don't think that Noom is the right choice for me anymore. Although I have thoroughly enjoyed it and I've learned a lot through using the app. I would recommend it um, if you don't have an eating disorder and you don't have problems um, with your weight loss. But I would suggest that you don't start at 1200 calories. Um, Pretty much anybody would lose the weight starting at 1200 calories. That is a huge deficit, especially if you're coming from eating like 3000 plus calories per day. You just don't need to go that low. So that's basically my biggest concern is the 1200 calorie uh, budget that it allots to people when they select cheetah mode. But like I said before, you are able to change it out of cheetah mode. So that's very beneficial. So I'm recording a bit later in the day, which is why I have a shirt change and it is now evening. Night has fallen behind me. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I feel like I explained everything that I felt about Noom and I appreciate you watching all the way through. If you did, please let me know if you've used Noom or what apps you're using to calorie count. I'd love to hear about your experience. Thanks so much again and please like and subscribe for more content. Goodbye.